Hi, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here at the Rutenberg Library. Wanted to come to you this afternoon with another bookshelf tour. Uh, last night we did the, the first shelf here in the upper room and I uh, did some moving around and I think uh, we're ready for the second shelf. As I shared with you last night, this is this is also our family storage room, so I have to kind of move things uh, here, there, and everywhere because uh, this is kind of the the uh, you know the place where everything gets collected. So uh, my my bookshelves end up getting buried in this room. So anyway, got everything moved out of the way. I think I'm ready to start our bookshelf tour uh, for the second shelf in this in this first uh, set of bookshelves. So the first book I got for you is. A World War I book over there by uh, Frank Friedel. So over there, the story of America's gr first great overseas crusade. Over 300 photographs illustrate the text. And uh, I have not read this one yet. Uh, I've, I've read some of it, but not all of it. Uh, it's very, uh, I thought it was very good. I like Frank Friedel. Um, anyway, this comes from Brommel House and is a 1989 book. I believe it's in Roman numerals, so I'm doing a little bit of guesswork. But uh, anyway, this was a kind of a coffee table size book, but uh, pretty good stuff. A lot of great photos. I'm a I'm a World War One guy, as I shared in the previous video, and so um, this book actually came out of our our uh, local library when they were when they were cleaning shelves, and so I picked that up for free. And being a World War One guy, I was happy to take that and put it right in my collection. Uh, the next volume is uh, The Age of Aristocracies, Ar Aristocracy, 1688 to 1830 by William B. Wilcox and Walter L. Arnstein, uh, or Arnstein, excuse me if I mispronounce that. Uh, it's the eighth edition of this, of this uh, History of England, is that the name? Yeah, History of England series. I like I like this series. I actually used this in college. This was one of my college texts. And so I have got volumes three and then volume four right here on the shelf. I don't have volumes one and two. I would absolutely love to get volumes one and two that match this this series. You know, this is the eighth edition. Um, I have not been able to find those at a reasonable price. It, it kind of drives me insane. Um, they want a small fortune for them on, on uh, Amazon usually. So I have not found those. Um, of course, I'll continue to look, but um, who knows if they'll come up. I don't know. But uh, here is volume four in the History of England series, 8th edition. Uh, Britain, yesterday and today, 1830 to the president. Present. Present. Uh, by Walter L. Arnstein, Arnstein, however you say that, and so this is a this was a good series of books that we had used in my college uh, history class for for England. Uh, I remember those being very very useful. Uh, next book on the shelf is The Steps of Bonhoeffer, a pictorial album by J. Martin Bailey and Douglas Gilbert. It says, the life and times and thought of a hero of our time presented in photographs and text. And so this is another coffee-sized table book. It's got, as it said, lots and lots of pictures and maps and stuff to illustrate everything. Oh, there's a there's something that was left in the middle of it. Huh. Anyway. Uh, there are lots and lots of pictures to help you get a visual when you're doing the reading. So there's the front. It's a thin volume, but that's that's okay. I've got somewhere in the collection another Bonhoeffer, maybe even two more Bonhoeffer books uh, that this would go nicely with. This is a, a 1969 book from the United Church Press out of Philadelphia. So that was a nice little addition to the collection. Next one's another college text of mine, The Western Heritage, 7th edition, volume C, since 1789. This is by Donald Kagan, Stephen Osmond, and Frank M. Turner. Now, um, I, I don't know how many other people out there like textbooks. I, I have a, um, maybe a fondness for textbooks that my wife 
would wishes that I didn't, but um, I I tend to like textbooks. I of course I like sitting in lectures and in the classroom too. I I just like learning. So um, anyway, I've got a few of them here. I didn't get rid of. I, I don't think I got rid of any of my college texts. So uh, a lot of these were ones I used in class. So this is from Prentice Hall, um, Upper Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, and it is a nineteen. Let's see. Oh, pardon me. 2001 edition. This one's a 2001 edition. Um, but we use that. My wife and I both use that in our college uh, European history class. Here's a text that I've picked up. A few of these I've just picked up at, at uh, auctions or, or for cheap at the bookstore. This is the American Pageant, A History of the Republic, Volume 2, by Thomas A. Bailey and David M. Kennedy. And a lot of times what I find is these authors of a lot of these college texts, they are pretty big name authors and they have a lot of books to their name. And so that's why I like reading the text. This this is the sixth edition, if I didn't say that. Um, D.C. Heath and Company out of Lexington, Massachusetts. And it is a 1979 edition. 1979 The next two are both The Great Republic, A History of the American People, but this is the second edition of Volume 1, and it is a little beat up. But what's kind of kind of neat to see is when they make the changes to these texts over the years, what new stuff they put in. So this one came out, D.C. Heath and Company, and this one came out in 1981. And the other one that I have, same textbook, same textbook, but this one is the fourth edition, and it came out in D.C. Heath and Company again, and it came out in 1992. Now, um, I like this because of who the authors are. Big name authors here in, in uh, American history. We've got Bernard Balin, we've got uh, Gordon Wood, we've got David Brian Davis, We've got uh, David Herbert Donald. So, I mean, really, really big name authors uh, when it comes to these textbooks. And so the next one in line is another one I used actually in class. And I absolutely love this. It's one of my favorite texts. Uh, America, Concise History, Volume 1. And I have... Uh, volume 2 running around here somewhere. Actually, I, I might even have it out because I use it for school every once in a while. But uh, this one it, this one goes to, to 1877, and it is, let's see, from the Bedford St. Martin's Press, and it's by James A. Henretta, David Brody, and Lynn uh, Dumanil. And it's a 1999 text. As I said, this was from my first year in college. And it was an excellent text. I would recommend that to anybody, that series. All right, so now we get into some regular, actually regular books instead of just textbooks. Um, so this book is Miracle at Philadelphia, the story of the Constitutional Convention made in September of 1787 by Catherine Drinker Bo uh, Bowen. And she has done several different uh, books over her lifespan. I've got a few of them in here. I want to say there's a John Adams and maybe a Thomas Jefferson that I've got somewhere in here. I know John. I'm, I'm fairly certain of John Adams. I'd have to double check. But uh, she's got a lot of books to her name. Oh, looky here. Here's a list of them. Um... Of course, I don't see it on the list. But anyway, get you the name. So this one this one comes from an Atlantic Monthly Press book, Little Brown and Company out of Boston, and it's a 1966 book. I have not read that one yet. That one also came out of uh, one of the libraries here in town. Uh, matter of fact, I think... No, we're going to get into some of these I bought. Never mind. Um, FDR's Splendid Deception. 
a mo the moving story of Roosevelt's massive disability and the intense efforts to conceal it from the public by Hugh Gregory Gallagher. And so, uh, as many of you know, he had polio, um, didn't regularly walk with his own legs, had to have, kind of had to have help all around. A lot of times was in a wheelchair and the press, they hid that from the press and the press back then is a lot different than the press today. Obviously the press today would have that right out for everybody to see. And back then they, they allowed people to hide some of their, um, uh, you know, deficiencies if they had a deficiency. Uh, so this is from Dodd Mead and Company out of New York and it is a 1985 book. Next one in the list, a sports novel. I told you I'm a baseball fan. So From Ghetto to Glory, the story of Bob Gibson. So here's another one for all you Cardinals fans. This is by Bob Gibson with uh, Phil, um, is it Pepe? Okay. Another one that I picked up out of the library that when they were getting rid of stuff. It is... Um, Prentice Hall Incorporated, Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey. And it's a 1968 book. All right, here's a, here's a book I picked up for my own knowledge with uh, the colonial times. Uh, I didn't know a ton. I mean, I know the basic story of Ann Hutchinson, uh, but I, I had never read a biography on her, so I picked up... Uh, one or two biographies. Here's at least one of them. I think I have another one around here somewhere. But um, So this is American Jezebel, The Uncommon Life of Anne Hutchinson, The Woman Who Defied the Puritans by Eve LaPlante, or LaPlante, however you say that. So that's kind of a neat cover, I think. Several of these have got these thrift or thrift store stickers on them because I bought them online on... on um, Amazon and so I know a lot of you don't like that but when you're working with a budget that's just how I have to get my books so anyway uh, I talked about Edward Lengel in previous videos well here's his World War One book to conquer hell the muse Argon 1918 the epic battle that ended the first world war and so um, this one is I like that cover. I think that's pretty cool. And I also think it's uh, it's going to be a neat book to read because my adopted dad's father, so my adopted grandpa, I never knew him, but uh, he actually fought in World War I and was in the Argonne, got gassed in the Argonne and lost a lung. And um, I know many of you are going to ask about the timing, like like the timeline of that. My adopted grandfather was very old when he had my adopted dad and my adopted dad was very old when he brought me in in foster care so if you're wondering about the timeline that's that's pretty much the timeline but anyway it always held a major interest for me because that's the one where he got uh, gassed and he left a he left a diary behind for us to read and that was that is pretty cool when you get those first-hand accounts all right, so the next book on the list is The New England Merchants in the 17th Century Bernard by Bernard Balin. And, of course, Bernard Balin, many of you know, he's kind of the godfather of early colonial history. A lot of people did their, their um, not masters, but their um, doctoral thesis with him and, and studied under him. This is from Harvard University Press, so another uh, university press book. Uh, copyright of 1955 on that book and so that I hope will be a good one I tend to like his stuff it's not always the fastest paced but it's always top-notch and very 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 good um, next one on the list is by a uh, not a slow pace but a very fast-paced writer David uh, David McCullough his book the Wright brothers and I picked that up uh, cheap at one of the stores. Please don't ask me which one because I cannot remember. But uh, there's David McAuliffe. He he does the voice or the the narration a lot in a lot of the um, documentaries on History Channel or PBS. And uh, he's just a wonderful, wonderful author. I would highly recommend any of his books. I would recommend them without even reading them. That's how good he is. Now, this is a Simon and Schuster book out of New York. Um, and it's a 2015 book. 
another one I need to get to. Most of these I have not gotten to yet that I'm showing you. All right, this is a book that I picked up for um, one of my high school classes I was teaching a few years back before we did some rearranging um, of classes. But um, I was teaching U.S. and world affairs, so basically, you know, foreign diplomacy. And so uh, I picked up U.S. Diplomacy Since 1900 by Robert D. Schullinger, 6th edition. And that was pretty interesting. I started reading that. I never did get all the way through it because they changed my classes again after... I don't know, after a year, I only had it for a couple semesters and then they, they got changed again. Uh, that sometimes happens in small schools. Uh, anyway, it was it was good up to the point of where I, what I read, very informative. Um, here is John Milton Cooper Jr.'s book, Woodrow Wilson, a biography. And uh, every time you look him up on Amazon, this particular book comes, if you're looking for biographies on Wilson, and of course I was when I was looking up World War I stuff, and uh, this book comes up almost every time you, you search it. And so I picked it up. Um, as it said, it was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. And this is from Vintage Books. And it's a 2009 book. 2009. Ah, yes, another World War I book by Margaret Macmillan, uh, Paris, 1919. And uh, there on the cover says, winner of the Samuel Johnson Prize. Uh, this is, you know, Paris, 1919, the six months that change, changed the world. And, of course, you got on the, on the front there, very famous, very famous uh, picture, uh, David Lloyd George and, and uh, George Clemenceau and Woodrow Wilson, uh, the big three there for World War I. They were very largely responsible for the peace negotiations. This is a, let's see, a two, 2003 paperback edition and from Random House. And so this is supposed to be a very, very good book. And I'm excited to have that and be able to get into that sometime in the near future. Here's a book I picked up out of Wiseman's. Um, Let's see, A Caring Society, The New Deal, The Worker, and the Great Depression by Irvin, uh, Irving Bernstein or Bernstein. Um, anyway, paid, I don't know, it was like a couple bucks for it. And thought it looked interesting. Huffton Mifflin Company out of Boston, 1985. And again, some of this is stuff I was just trying to expand my library so that it, it uh, you know, covered more of the stretch of history and not just so much of American Revolution and Civil War, which is what a lot of mine does, uh, a lot of my collection. But uh, I was trying to stretch it out so that I was covering more of American history. Uh, here's one I picked up by Mary Frances Berry, Black Resistance, White Law, A History of Constitutional Racism in America. And of course, got, uh, you know, some civil rights stuff in it. And trying to look at all sides of the equation, as I try to do. This is Alan Lane, The Penguin Press. And let's see here, 1994 is this book. Uh, here is Paul F. and is it Baller or Bowler Jr. Uh, presidential Campaigns. I thought that was kind of kind of a neat uh, cover. It's got all the caricatures of the several of the presidents anyway. I thought that was kind of neat. It is a, uh, this come out of our school library. Oxford University Press out of New York. So another Another University Press book. Uh, this one in particular is a 1985 book. Basically goes over the different presidential elections. So now we get into uh, one of our presidential historians, Michael Beschloss. Um, and this one is Presidential Courage, Brave Leaders, and How They Changed America, 1789 to 1989. Okay. Show that to you both ways. Got some neat pictures on there. 
there's the author, Michael Beschloss. He's uh, pretty pretty famous for being a presidential historian. Uh, this is a Simon and Schuster book out of New York, and it is a 2007 book. And then it you know now it advertises author of the Conquerors. Well, guess what's next? We've got the hardback of the Conquerors by Michael Beschloss. Roosevelt, Truman, and the Destruction of Hitler's Germany, 1941 to 1945. I like this cover too. I think that's pretty sharp. And this is a Simon & Schuster book out of New York. And it is a, this particular one's a 2002. Getting to the end of the shelf here. Get a couple of fiction, works of fiction. Uh, Ambrose Bierce's Civil War, with an introduction by William McCann. Oh, show you that book, sorry. And this is a collection of stories. Collection of short stories. Wings, books out of New York, and it's a 1996 this one is I think it originally came out in 1956 but this is a 1996 edition of that and here is another Ambrose Beer Civil War stories this one's from Dover Thrift editions um, Dover publications New York and let's see here hmm 1994 1994, 1994. And the last book for this shelf tour is America's Frontier Heritage by Ray Allen Billington. Pretty big name in frontier history, if you're familiar with that part of history. Um, this was one of my old college texts. I took a, took a class on um, history of the West and it covered the cattle drives, like in this book, it covered the mining, and then it covered the fur industry. And that that teacher I had, he ended up, he had us read three different, uh, three different um, trade books, and we we had to have all three of those read. And it, it was it was a lot of reading for not being an upper. Uh, well, maybe it was a, maybe it was an upper level class. Maybe it was, but uh, anyway, it was a lot of reading. Uh, University of New Mexico Press out of Albuquerque. And it is a 1974 book. And it was always funny because this particular teacher would have these trade books that he'd want us reading. And he'd put them on the reading lists. And several of them were out of print. And so you really had to go hunting to find the books. It, it became kind of a pain. That is actually, I'll be honest, that is actually where I discovered ABE books. Um... I I bought they were the, the other students were going over to the bookstore and if the bookstore had them they were they were running I don't know 25 30 bucks a book for you know just a regular regular book and I found it on ABE books for just a couple bucks I, I don't remember exactly what it was but it was just a couple bucks and it was probably at that point forward where I started my slow process of I, I stopped buying new books and I started buying used books online I that's where I discovered online buying and um, it it definitely saved my pocketbook <laughs> so um, anyway this is uh, my second shelf on the shelf tours um, I am Bill Rutenberg. This is part of the Upper Room, part of the uh, the Rutenberg Library, and I hope you enjoyed this. If um, feel free to leave comments down below, um, uh, like the, like the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel and share this with others. And as always, BookTube, happy reading.